Good morning, about Nice School. I'm Tanner Strive. I'm Savannah Turek. And you're watching Cutlass TV News. This year's court ordering is on February 10th. Here's a story why this year is so special. By Tanner Strife, Joshua Fife, Mason Goffey, and Jessica Larson. Excited that you guys get started. Well, we're amazed. Next Saturday, tickets will start to go on sale next week. Miss Fales, BHS Stucco advisor, shares insight on what makes this year's court warming so special. Well, the focus this year is more on working with the um, students who have a heart for others that want to really serve others. And then we have four honored life skill students who are part of the court this year. And the goal for the um, proceeds from the dance and any donations that we get are to send at least one. We'd love to send two of them to Camp Barnabas, which is a special needs camp where they would get to go as a guest from Belton High School from the proceeds that came from the dance. So when the um, nominees were presented for names for being on the court, the coaches from girls basketball, boys basketball, wrestling, and girls swimming, which are the four sports that are in season, were asked to nominate their outstanding leaders. But we kind of went with a little bit smaller number being the first time we're doing it and just getting the pieces in place. We may expand on that next year. We may grow as we go. Um, I didn't want the life school students to feel too overwhelmed as far as large, large numbers. So we, we kind of kept it where there's it's two um, honor students to each life skill student and hopefully make them feel um, The theme for the dance is red, white, and black, red, white, and you, and the, um, we're asking kids to come dressed in red, white, and black. Um, it's gonna all be decorated in red, white, and black. Kind of have a little bit of a Valentine feel, but more just a really fun, festive feel. And um, that is on Saturday, February 10th from 7 to 10. Tickets will start going on sale that week. They'll be $10 a single, $18 a couple, $12 at the door, $20 a couple at the door. Um, and the focus is we just want as many kids to get there as possible. The more kids that come, the more proceeds we have, the more money that we'll have to scholarship for maybe we can give three scholarships, which would be fabulous. Um, but the goal is to get a lots and lots of kids there to just come and have fun. Stuco President Anna McDonald explains what this year's ticket proceeds will go to and who will benefit from it. We actually have a purpose for what we're doing and it's going towards our SOMO kids to go to Camp Artemis. So it's a really good cause. It's a camp where SOMO athletes come together to stop. The proceeds off the tickets for court warming are going to try to scholarship two of our own SOMO athletes to go to Camp Barnabas. Show up to help out one lucky life school student Saturday, February 10th. With Mason Goffey, yeah. Josh Fife, Jessica Larson, I'm Tanner Strife with Cutlass TV News. Mr. Bremen is a new teacher that started at the beginning of the school year. Daniel Higgins, Isaac Peterson, Michael Landreth, and Brian Reyes share his story. This new year has brought a new teacher to BHS. Mr. Brumman speaks on what helped him decide to join BHS and what he enjoys about it. So for me, Belton offered a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't get at the previous school that I was working at. Uh, for me, I liked the fact that we offer the Project Lead the Way courses, like computer science, uh, that pathway that's always interested me. Um, and my background is also in computer ish things so it was kind of a natural kind of flow that went into that as well um, also working I got the opportunity to work summer school before I came like I was full-time summer school before I came full-time here and just to see how much students need math and how much they want to learn like even students in summer school they kind of get a bad rep but I saw a lot of students in summer school who really like they really wanted to learn they wanted to know and they wanted to succeed and being able to provide that makes me feel like I'm a good teacher 
Fellow students and teachers alike seem to enjoy this new addition to the staff. Here are some reasons they enjoy Mr. Brumman's company. Uh, I like Mr. Brumman a lot as part of the BHS crew. He is uh, very dedicated to his teaching and dedicated to making sure his students achieve at a high level and uh, works very hard at that. And I think uh, he's bringing a really good personality to our school. We share some similar interests, so that uh, really makes working with him go a lot better. Uh, he has an interesting sense of humor that I definitely appreciate, and uh, it's been really good working with him so far. Um, he's got a new way of teaching. Uh, I had Ganson last year, and he had some pretty simple notes. It was hard to follow, but Mr. Brumman, he has a more uh, harder version of his notes, and it really challenges what I can do to the best of my ability. Mr. Broman, he's a funny character. Um, he tries not to make his class too dull, just like Mr. Ganson, which I like about that. With the many joys the school brings, it can also carry a few challenges with it. Mr. Broman addresses his only concern. Uh, the only difficulty that I had was um, getting a clock in my classroom, and I still don't have one. So, um, and that's kind of my fault. The very first day of uh, new teacher orientation and training that I had. I may have accidentally broken the clock. May have, may have, like, like go with may here. And um, I put in a work order request for that, still haven't got it. That's the only issue that I have, is not, not having a reliable clock. Because we know our MacBooks don't keep up with the, the bell schedule time, so I want a clock that actually has the right time. As humble as Mr. Brumman is, he strays the attention off of him and puts some focus on students, giving them a few words of wisdom. Um, well, I just want to say like, you know, each of you has a gift or a talent and you can use that. Use it. Find what you're good at. There is a club, an organization, and if there's not, make one that really showcases you off. Because after your three slash four years here at BHS, uh, what do you have to show? What are you doing? Well, how are you making Belton High School better? So do something. Be a part of something. With Daniel Higgins and Michael Landreth, I'm Brian Reyes with Cutlass TV News. Students have been confused on their GPAs lately. To clarify the topic, here's Kaylin Hill, Chloe Murphy, Andrew Clark, and Dusty Quarles. Have you noticed your GPA being a little different lately? Principal Phil Clark, Counselor Chad Cross, and Senior Jack Jonathan shared their thoughts on the new GPA system. When we're coming in, right, we're working jumpstart day, and we're telling the sophomores, hey, pluses and minuses, they're not going to affect you anymore. I had to start thinking about it. And as I was flipping through my academic history, as we seniors are prone to do, you know, you got to do those last minute GPA calculations. It's like, all right, if I take X many classes and I get X amount of score, then maybe I can get magna cum laude. But all in all, it, I mean, it's new, it's a change. It helped me. It might hurt somebody else. And so whether or not something's good, you just got to, sometimes you just got to play the game and let the chips fall where they may. Had before was a system that was, that afforded uh, X number of points based on whether or not a student had a, a minus, a straight grade, or a plus. And so, for example, let's use the, the grade letter B. If a student had a B minus, they would have earned, uh, they would have actually earned, um, uh, 2.67 points. If they had a B, they would get three points. And if they had a B plus, they would get 3.33 points. And the same was true for, for all of the grades. Um, and that, that in some ways uh, challenges students who are in competition with other schools uh, or students from other schools if in fact they have a straight 4.321. So the student that has a B minus, say, uh, may be more inclined to push to get a B or even a B plus without a doubt. But the real uh, penalty comes when one has an A minus or a B minus and they don't get the full four or three points. It's, it's, I recognize that there's been some confusion, but the transition now brings us to a grading scale or a GPA uh, calculation. Of, if you get an A, whether it's an A plus, an A, or an A minus, you're going to receive four points. If you get a B, whether it's a B plus, a B, or a B minus, you'll get three points. It really simplifies how these percentages are calculated. Now we made the transition primarily so that those students that are vying for scholarship and whatnot could uh, be in the same race uh, uh, with uh, neighboring districts who use a 4-3-2-1 scale. It's not the only factor, obviously, 
but it, it does uh, provide a, uh, a little bit of an incentive to get to that next grade. In other words, don't settle for a C plus because that will be a two, and if you could get to a B minus, you'll actually pick up a full point there. Uh, another one of the confusing things is how did we how did we move forward? Those grades that have been accumulated on the old system will continue to carry the same point values from the old system. So we're basically merging two systems, beginning with the fall semester of this 2017-18 school year. Uh, essentially prior to January hadn't changed yet because the new GPA came into effect um, for first semester. So your GPA wouldn't, wouldn't have changed from last May until this past January. So um, the, the transcript request that came in after the new GPA had changed, I guess after students GPAs had changed, we did some spot checks to make sure the GPAs were right before sending the transcripts. So any transcripts that we sent prior to January are good, and any transcripts we've sent, sent since the GPAs changed is also good, are also good. Uh, the GPA change can be, a, can, can be helpful to students um, in a sense of an A- minus is now worth the same as like an A or an A+, plus, or a B- minus is worth the same as a B or a B+. Plus. Um, so there's, uh, there's, there are advantages for students um, to, who, have, who may have a C plus to work up to that B um, minus type grade because it will still count towards a B or a person that's right on that edge of a B or an A that gives them um, some incentive to go from that 89 to the 90 because the bump is now instead of a .33 bump, it's a full point bump. So it, it, um, it's helpful for students because it can, in, it can increase their GPA by moving one, I guess, it's helpful for students because it can increase their GPA more by moving one uh, percentage point. So from 89 to 90. Kaylin Hill, Chloe Murphy, and Destiny Corals, I'm Andrew Clark for Cutlass TV News. Tonight and this weekend, Belton Theater hosts its rendition of Harvey. Here's a sneak peek by Savannah Truitt. Belton's theater program puts on a variety of shows throughout the school year. This week, the play Harvey is coming to the forum. Well, the play is called Harvey, and it's about a man named Elwood Dowd, who has a friend who happens to be an invisible fairy known as a puka, who's taken the shape of a six-foot-tall rabbit. So he's the only one that can see it, and um, he has a sister that lives with him, and, and her daughter lives, lives with him, and he's kind of an embarrassment to them because he loves to introduce everybody to his friend, the invisible six-foot-tall rabbit that nobody else can see, so everybody thinks that he's crazy. And she's kind of had it, and she tries to commit him into a sanitarium, and um, but by mistake, somehow, she gets committed into the sanitarium instead, and hilariousness ensues. But um, basically, it's about her kind of realizing that it's okay that he's that he's eccentric, yes, and um, he lives life to the fullest, even though he may see this in, invisible creature that not everybody believes in. He's extremely happy, and that's really what life should be about, not about fitting into the social norm. And so that's kind of what it's about. I chose it because it's a comedy classic. I needed something to balance out Sweeney Todd. I wanted to go, you know, I didn't want to do something too edgy right after something pretty edgy. So I wanted to have this kind of like this wholesome um, feel to it. And um, it's a movie with Jimmy Stewart, and so I think People, you know, my age and older, just have fond memories of his old movies, and, and it's just, it's a fun, it's a fun story with some interesting characters. Well, I hope they get the same thing that Vita does in, in the show, which is that you don't have to fit the social norm to, to be happy in life, and that it's okay to not have such a harsh, um, you know, realistic um, reality, basically, that you can have um, hope and you can have kindness and you don't have to follow by other people's rules but you know to still live a good moral life I guess. I play Elwood P. Dowd in the play. Uh, he's a very soft-spoken man. He's very kind and 
charismatic in a way. Uh, he's almost a father figure. He's very well mannered, and he he tries to be friends with everybody. I really like this play. It's it's a very interesting play, and it's very different than most of the shows that we do. Uh, these past couple of shows have been really dark and, uh, well, Heather's, which was the happy show, was uh, basically about school bombing, and then Sweeney Todd was about a murderous barber. This one's about a man who can see a six foot one and a half bunny that walks on two legs, and he's the only one that can see it, uh, so everybody else thinks he's insane. It's a very interesting story. Um, it's a comedy, which I really appreciate, too. I mostly chose this character because it was the central character of the play. It was the main character, and I thought, hey, it's my last show. Might as well go out with a bang. Um, and plus, this character was really interesting to me. I thought it would be a good acting challenge for me. Um, and plus, it's a Jimmy Stewart role, so I think that I can fit that character pretty well. Um, plus, hey, maybe I can compete with Jimmy Stewart, who knows. I just thought it would be a really fun role to do. I play Miss Kelly. Um, she's like a hard worker. She wants to impress like the doctors that she works for, one, so she can keep her job, and two, because she kind of has a crush on Dr. Sanderson. Um, I think Miss Kelly's a fun part to play. She's kind of like similar to how I am, so she's kind of a role that I related to, which is why I wanted the part of Miss Kelly when I auditioned. Uh, the play's been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It's been fun going through all the rehearsal schedules and um, just getting familiar with her was a lot of fun with Miss Kelly. Um, I'm playing the role of Vita. Uh, she's Elwood's older sister. Um, she's a pretty motherly character, which I seem to identify with. Um, and she's definitely pretty stern, but I like the role. It's, it was a challenge for me and it was nice. I like the play in general. It's, it is a little ambiguous, but it says something about the way that we all feel that we want something to believe in, even if other people don't strictly think it's true. We had auditions for the show about a week and a half after Sweeney Todd was over, so it's a quick turnaround on a lot of shows, but we've been working on it for about uh, two months now. It's, it's been a while, but we're definitely ready for the show. The play will be at the Middle School Forum on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 7 p.m. and on Sunday at 1 p.m. Tickets are $6 for adults and $3 for students at the door. Don't miss this quirky performance that is sure to make you laugh. With Joshua Fife, I'm Savannah Truitt for Cutlass TV News. Here's this week's sports report. I'm Samantha Lavalley and I'm Kaylin Hill and welcome back to Sports Report. The Lady Pirates basketball team got off to a slow start on Monday but stepped it up in the second half winning 49 to 25. The Pirates had three players that scored double figures. Cameron Estelle with 14, Corinne Moss with 10, and Kendall Lewis added 13. Wrestling finished the regular season with a dual win over Raytown South. Their dual record was a solid 13-4 on the season. They finished third in conference behind Kearney and Platte County. They also finished ranked fifth in the state for class three. The varsity men's basketball team battled hard and even overcame an early deficit to find themselves up in the third quarter. But ultimately they fell to a state-ranked Raytown South yesterday, 41-53. Jaden Clark led Belton with 19 points. Tune in next time for Sports Report. Thanks for watching Belton High School. Remember to tune in next week. And as always, Carpe, Carpe Diem. Diem.